Capcom took the worst elements of bosses across all genres of games, tossed it into a blender, and somehow came out with one of the best hunts in Sunbreak. Just how they managed to accomplish such a strange feat is actually more straightforward than you might think. According to all known laws of aviation, there's no way a- wait, hang on, that's a different video. According to all known laws of game design, there's no way a boss like Espinos should be anything more than garbage. Let me list off some aspects of this boss, and feel free to stop me if any of this sounds like it would make for a fun experience. First, this boss has armor that prevents your attacks from working effectively. Bosses like this are generally annoying because the only way you can break through the armor is either by doing something that slows down the combat, like tossing a bomb, or just chipping away until it breaks. Armor not only stands between you and the boss, but it also stands between some nonsense that you probably don't want to do and an actual engaging boss fight. Next, there's everyone's favorite way of taking damage. Poison, or more broadly, damage over time. Oftentimes in games, damage over time is something that either forces you to drop everything and heal it, or something that can't be healed and is simply guaranteed damage that you just have to sit there and endure. So you might be thinking, well sure, but doesn't regular damage force you to drop everything and heal too? In some cases, yes, it does. However, if you're skilled enough, and if you're playing the right game, you can just avoid getting hit when your health gets too low. This also leads to some super exciting moments when your back is against the wall and you play even better to avoid failure. The difference with damage over time is that there's nothing you can do about it. Your health will continue to drop well after the initial attack has landed, meaning you effectively have to heal to prevent a slow inevitable death. And speaking of status effects, what if we mixed those with projectiles? Projectiles on their own honestly aren't bad at all, and can even lead to some incredible moments like the final fight with Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time. But when mixed with status effects, they can quickly become unbearable. Now, none of this is inherently bad, and I think Espinas proves that. But I personally have never once been excited to fight a boss with damage over time, armor, and paralysis on their projectiles. Yet, somehow, Espinas pulls it off brilliantly. Let's talk about how. Let's start with the armor. Espinos has some very strong armor, and in Monster Hunter, armor can be especially annoying as it prevents you from doing your full combos and sends you into this awkward bounce. This armor does go away rather quickly, but the moment it does, the real fight begins. You see, Espinos is technically at its most vulnerable when it's enraged. The best time to deal damage is at this moment, but naturally it's also when the monster is at its most dangerous. This mechanic of a monster being more vulnerable when enraged is fine, but the armor is what actually makes this work. If Espinos took, say, 10 damage when enraged and 7 when tired, you could easily just wait for it to tire itself out. But if the numbers were something like 10 and 2, your only real opportunity to deal big damage comes when the monster is at its strongest. These two phases of the fight blend brilliantly to create an intense atmosphere where both you and the monster are desperately trying to deal as much damage to each other as possible. But how does damage over time work in this monster's favor? Well, simple. The poison heals relatively quickly. Due to this quick healing, you don't have to drop everything and heal the poison. If you just play careful and wait a bit, you lose a little bit of health, sure, but the poison naturally goes away in a couple of seconds. Plus, since these fireballs carry poison in them, they leave poisonous smoke behind when they explode. This is just a cool little piece of attention to detail because of course toxic fireballs would create toxic smoke. Lastly, there's the second and significantly more dangerous part of these fireballs. Certain fireballs don't just poison you, they paralyze you as well. This is by far the most deadly aspect of this monster, as being paralyzed not only opens you up to a free attack, but it also prevents you from subscribing. Now, not only are you gonna cart, but you're gonna miss future videos too. <laughs> that one was pretty good. Okay, but how does Paralysis make the fight better? Well, every powerful monster needs a signature move, right? It's essential in really making the hunt special. Think of your favorite monster, I can almost guarantee it has some form of signature move that deals massive damage. The reason this is so important is because it keeps you on your toes. Sure, you could run in and go all out against Espinas, but if you do, there's a very real chance you'll get caught off guard and hit with its signature attack. You need to match this monster's aggression, sure, but you also need to be smarter than it. It rushes in mindlessly and attacks you as much as it can, but you need to be equal parts aggressive and calculated in your approach to avoid this attack. If it didn't paralyze you, this fight would quickly just turn into a mindless slugfest. Now, I won't lie, when I first heard about what kind of hunt Espinas was, I was pretty worried. 
However, thanks to a brilliant combination of a bunch of techniques that really shouldn't work, Capcom was able to create a truly one-of-a-kind experience. Espinos shouldn't have been a good hunt. In fact, on paper, this boss should be awful, and yet, it's one of the most unique and engaging fights in the series. Which is why I say, a monster like Espinos just shouldn't be possible. But man am I glad that it is. However, there's one other developer that shares Capcom's skill in combat, and that's because both FromSoft and Capcom have a secret. Check out this video on just what that is.